All right, you know what? I'm just going to talk you through it then. Screw that. I don't need this. I, I did all this stuff. Okay, so we'll go back. What you're looking at here is just... This is the original... There's my ugly face. Okay, this is what I originally put down and leave on my garden. Right here, this stuff. You have straw. I'll cover it with straw, leaves, and a little bit of pine needles on this side. Um, I go heavier in other places where I have berries and stuff like that. But what this is, is pretty much just to, um, this is the food. This is the stuff you find on the forest floor. Maybe not so much the straw. Well, yeah, you do find straw, tall grass and whatnot. So, and I'm trying to put as much of that back into the soil as I can. That's the food for the plant. Then what I have there is my manure. Um, I'll put maybe a one, two inch covering of manure down and I'll let it sit for a couple weeks. Uh, the white powder you're seeing on there is lime. So I take the straw, the leaves, and the um, pine needles, and I'll put those on in the fall. And I let them sit over all winter, let the rain or the snow set on them. Then I go and get some horse, I like horse manure, a couple years old at least. Um, it, there's amazing stuff with alpaca manure. Look into it. It'd be nice if I could find an alpaca farmer. Horses, you have to wait a couple years. This is just regular lime you can go buy at the hardware store. It's just limestone that's crushed up into a fine powder. Can you guys hear me talking? At least? Are you hearing my voice here? Yeah, because it's real windy in the video anyway. And, um... Yeah, it's real video in the or real windy in the video. And what I'm explaining here is in a couple weeks. Actually, we're going to go into this in another video. So I'm just going to explain kind of why I do this. Um, we take so much out of the soil every year. When you know we grow plants in it, the plants take a lot of the nutrients and stuff out of the soil and put it up into the fruit that we eat well you have to put stuff back into the soil that stuff that was taken out it's it's so important if you don't wanna kill the soil and pretty much turn it into sand eventually that's what what happens you drain it of all the life there's no bacteria and organisms crawling around in it um, that's why I love manure Manure is so important. It has so many of these living bacteria that help break down stuff. And all those leaves and all those, they just eat that stuff and devour it. And then earthworms come by and eat that. And if, if you do it how nature does it, you can't go wrong. I don't put any chemicals on anything. There's a little bit of uh, garlic growing. <laughs> Here's my old buddy. Scrappy do, and there's some uh, right here spearmint. I put spearmint or peppermint. That's spearmint though. I'll put spearmint everywhere. Um, it helps keep bugs away. Things like that. But putting the stuff back into your soil, um, you can find a lot of this stuff in so many different books. This isn't hidden knowledge. Um, putting the dead stuff you get in your yard, the leaves. I'll fill this up with leaves. It'll be like a foot deep with leaves when the winter starts, and then it slowly breaks down because I cover it up with straw and all kinds of stuff. So let's go check out... Uh, we'll start with the poor man's... No, nah, let's do more with the soil. Okay, tilling a garden. Poor man tilling of a garden. Um, all you need is a shovel, folks. I pour everything out with buckets in my hands. As you can see, I've already tilled this over here. That's the black dirt. You can still see some of the manure in there and straw. But all I do is go by. This is about a week or two later, most likely. You can see all that lime has been washed into the soil. The manure isn't as dark. It's somewhat drying out a little bit. Now I go through every square inch. I'll turn over like this with the shovel.
Yeah, dread. I'm, I'm an idiot when it comes to this kind of stuff. And I didn't feel like doing the live. In Roots, it's very important. What I'm doing right now, every time I pick up a show, this takes time to do if you want to do it right. So every time I pull up a shovel load, I go through and pick out as many of the roots as I can. You don't want roots growing. Roots are going to turn into a plant. And you don't want anything else draining your soil of all this stuff you're putting into it. I'll show you a pile of the roots that I have probably here in a second sitting off to the side. And I've only done maybe 10 by 14 feet, square feet, 140 square feet. And I'll show you this pile. And then I go through and break it all up and see how many roots you can pull out of just one one scoopful, one shovelful. So if you go through there, and, and it's going to make your life a lot easier later on. If you get the roots out now, and I'll show you a really neat trick that um, will almost guarantee you get all the roots out. And then, yeah, I'll, I'll kind of mix it all together, the black dirt, and I'll mix some of that stuff in there with it. It doesn't hurt the plants. It doesn't have to look super pretty. I used to worry about looking super pretty. There, That's all the roots I pulled out already that big pile out of that little area right there so there is and you have to do this every year it, you have to if you don't it's gonna be harder that's just you know it's it's part of the process so the more you put into it the more you're gonna get out of it the more you go in there and really get into the soil and get everything out of there you don't want growing the more nutrients your plants are going to have, the more thankful they are going to be for all that effort you put into it. You know, you really need to speak with your plants. It's it's imperative to have get that relationship with them. Okay, now let's go to the poor man's compost pile. So easy to do. You can see I have some manure in there. I have just plain old dirt. And then over there, you saw these are ashes. I'll take ashes from burning leaves, burning roots. I burn everything that I pull out of the garden that I, you know, I'm not going to put back into it and use. I burn it. And then I put that back into my compost. There are so many important salts and minerals that all of these roots, all of these, the leaves, there's so many different things you can grab well, that the plants grab, you know, that you want to take all that stuff, everything, the roots, the leaves, the flat, anything that you're not using, and put it back in. And what I'm doing, I'm just mixing it right here. I'll take my dirt, my manure, and my, uh, my ashes, and I get them all mixed together real nice. And then about every two weeks, I'll put some of this around my plants. I'll go up to every plant and about six inches away from the the stem, the stalk, I'll just sprinkle a couple handfuls around it. Just a nice, not a whole lot. You don't want to overdo it and you don't want to do it too often. That's why I transfer back and forth. I'll do straight manure one week and then I'll do compost a week and then I'll go back straight manure the next week and then straight compost again the next week. And I found that that mixture works pretty good for me with the soil that I had and the way I was mixing it. Um, it, it takes time. It really does. I put some years into uh, doing this. Okay, I have another set of ashes over here. Like every time I burn, I would come over here and throw my ashes into this. Now I'm going to be adding a lot more stuff into it here. Um, let's see. We'll go to the next one. Uh, now what to compost? Let's see. Do I even talk about it? No, I'm just still playing in the dirt. Yeah, I'll, I'll get these all with the uh, the sound. And I'll put together a video and premiere just that, not this nonsense of me talking. But I've learned a lot since a lot of this stuff. This is where I'm showing you the fire pit that I had. And, you know, I would burn everything. 
you could see a lot of roots in there right now, stuff like that. And I would actually dig it out and get some of that dirt right there. It is, it's so easy. Everything that I've done right now that I've showed you is done with a shovel and a hoe. Okay, here's some scraps. So we'll have some coffee grounds down there, apple peels, orange peels, um, banana peels are real good. Any kind of fruit or vegetable is fine. Pull the sticker off, all that kind of crap. Um, coffee grounds are great. Eggshells are great. Don't put meat. You don't want to put meat into your compost. Um, I know people who have used fish before, which actually might be a good, good way to get some more iodine into it. I was thinking about trying to find some natural sea kelp um, when I'm out there in the Carolinas. Maybe I can get some of that and just get that down into the soil dry it out, burn it up, get some more iodine into the soil, things like that. And look at that soil, look at that. I mean, I'm in Indiana, so it's not really a surprise. But that stuff right there is gold. And this is how I do it. I don't have a, the big barrel you turn over or anything. I dig a hole, I'll dump all my scraps in there, I cover it up. I'll come back, you know, four or five days later once there's some more stuff in the bucket I keep my bucket outside away from the door because it does attract flies and stuff like that but again flies aren't bad flies are gonna eat stuff they're gonna poop on it and that poop is gonna be all the little the little you know creepy crawler things that are gonna start eating up that soil and you want as much life in the soil as you can get so a lot of this stuff it smells bad it's you know it's icky it's this it's that but this is the stuff that the plants love right here and we already watched this one poor man tilling of a garden uh planting when you go to plant stuff um, this is a pickle plant that i had just put in the ground nice and happy and healthy there um always know which plants you can plant and when you don't want to be planting things that get really damaged by frost and can die at these young stages. I've been burned a few times. Never lose too many plants. I'll go out a good ways to cover them with plastic bags, the ones you get at the grocery store, even anything to hold some of that heat in. If you, if you planted a big lot and a freak frost is coming up on the horizon and you know about it, go. I've, I've had 70-something plastic bags out there over all my plants and I'd lose two or three of them only and this just showing you and listen to when it when it tells you to um, you know separate them by a couple feet give them you know two square feet for uh, like a pepper plant really they say 18 inches but you want to give them that 18 inches they'll say four feet for a pickle plant. So from two feet on each side of that plant, you want to have it to where it has room. And it is so important. I, I got burned my first year ever gardening because I wasn't paying attention. I wanted to fit as much as I could in this tiny little plot that I'm in right now. Um, so I had four pickle plants all like six, seven inches apart, eight inches apart, and I did not get one pickle. It's like putting three or four pickle plants into a five-gallon bucket. Yeah, the plants will grow. They'll make leaves and they'll make flowers. Right here, okay, I'm putting a little bit of manure. This is just straight manure, a couple years old now. It's been, you know, it's been there for a while. And I put it at the bottom of the hole, and then I'll go take some of my compost, and I'll cover that manure completely so the roots don't touch the straight manure. When you go to put in a new baby plant, even though the manure has been sitting for a couple years, it still might be a little hot, the chemicals in it. And for a big plant, it wouldn't bother it so much. But for a baby, you really want to, you know, treat it like it's a baby. These plants are, they're alive and they're very young at this time. 
So any way you can protect them. And then on top of the compost, I'll go take a little just handful of dirt and cover that up. So all the dirt around it is is the same, but once its roots start spreading out and growing down into it, it's going to hit this stuff and get a little bit at a time. It's going to eat it as it needs it. Yes, Sean Becker. Um, learn how to plant by the moon. So important. Uh, NJ Jeep Girl. This is actually, I lived in a sand lot right here. They did have black dirt brought in, but um, I have pictures of my buddy, uh, A. McKenzie, down there in Florida, and he had a sand backyard, and in one one year, just composting regularly every single day and burning the leaves and doing all the stuff that we were just covering, he has turned sand into black gold. I mean, this soil is so dark. It's ridiculous. It's I can't believe how well he has done. It makes me so proud to be the person to have, you know, showed him his green thumb because he knows he, what he's doing and he loves it and he does it. That's so, it's so easy because all you have to do is just do it. Hey, Melissa. Hey, Winston. Yeah, um, it's, it's really simple and easy to do. The plants respond just like everything else. It's just like having a pet. If you love that pet and you show it a lot of attention and you care for it, that pet is going to love you so much. It's not going to be afraid of you. It's not, you know, it's you're going to create this bond between you two. Well, you can do that with plants as well. It's it hurts when you go to, you know, get them out of the ground. It does. But I think we're supposed to feel that sacrifice when when we consume these things. We've gotten so removed from our food that we just eat it and we don't have any care for the life that it once was. They've taken that away from us. Now what I'm doing right here, I'm aerating the soil. I'm helping nitrogen naturally get down into the roots. A lot of people will use pellets and things like that. I try to stay as natural as I can. So what I do, I go around the plant, and I like the three-pronged. Um, it's about a three-foot pole. That's my favorite one. I'll show you right here, and I'll go. I'll start maybe a foot away, and I just start churning. I don't drag through. You don't want to hit too many roots. I go down, and I just turn. See that? And then I pop right back up. Now the plant's small, so I know I'm not going to hit any roots at that distance. That's why I'm getting really down once the plant gets bigger, you have to really be careful because uh, you'll see the whole plant move sometimes when you do this. It's like, whoa, you have a really big root growing out there. Grass cuttings for nitrogen? I don't know. I've never heard that. Um, nitrogen pantaloons. Any type of pea that has a pod, you can take the peas out if you want, but keep the pantaloon and the whole rest of that plant and you could just bury that plant in your soil and they create a uh, a lot of nitrogen naturally all the pantaloon family snow peas are great to grow in the winter and then just till under your soil in the spring um, there's some Chinese cabbages that do the same thing um, I've noticed some I used to know a Korean farmer back in Indiana and he he had brought that over with him and some other farmers started doing it and mimicking him just big giant these chinese cabbages that grow in the winter they grow to be like two three feet long real big almost basketball size and then they just till it up in the winter time it smells or in the spring it smells horrible though so a lot of people quit doing it but he does it every year and he has great success look at all these flowers these are that's, these are the pickle plants that I was just planting right there. Now what I'm doing right here is um, when you grow certain plants, they're going to grow these little arms on them. They're going to have these little tiny tendrils that grow off to help them pull themselves along the ground. Now, they'll start doing it to each other. And... 
you don't want that. You want your plants playing nice with each other. And when you train them, like telling them which way to go, you know, which way to, uh, you want them to grow so they're not all growing into one bunch and overlapping and not getting as much sun as they can. See, that's neat, isn't it? How they grab onto little things and just pull themselves in certain directions. But you really don't want them to grab onto each other. And just like you, these are like their fingers. Now, could you imagine if you just had a hold of someone and they just took your wrist and just ripped your hand off or ripped your, one of your fingers off? That would suck. It would take a while to heal. And your body would have to put a lot of energy and nutrients into that to heal it. So instead of just cutting these or ripping them off, which you could do, it won't kill the plant, I like to go in and unwrap them like this. You know? And I even tell them, hey, come on, guys, let's get together here. Let's play nice. Let's try not to do this stuff. But when you do this, neither of the plants get hurt. And they can, instead of spending time trying to fix themselves, they can spend more time growing and putting food on your table like you want them to do. So remember, these are living things. And the, the less that they suffer and hurt, the more they're going to thrive for you. Barefoot is always a good way to be in your garden. I implemented that a few years ago that I didn't allow people with shoes on in my gardens. And by the end of the year, that whole place will be filled. You barely see the ground. So the leaves get so big. Like, there isn't even a cucumber growing yet. I showed you that one little tiny one there at the front. Yeah, it's amazing. And water, folks. Water is so important. It is so important to... I watered every day. Every single day. Every morning. I would water them. And yes, they will live. They will produce without it. But I had years where I did it every three days. And then I had years where I did it every day. And when I had my years of the pickle, I had pickled 212 jars by the 4th of July one year. Just ungodly amounts of pickles. And it was because that is an edible plant right there. They call it lamb's ear up there in Indiana. I know it has another name. Whole thing's edible. Oh, there's another little pickle. But see, those are the babies just starting. Now, you see those big... Here, let's go back there for a sec. Are we going to see, where's it at? Oh, did I not? Okay. Now, see these little, well, I've gotten the question a couple times. Um, how do you tell when your pickles are ready or your cucumbers are ready? When these big lumps right here, these nubs, flatten out, now you'll see them, the babe, they'll call them baby dills or the baby, you know, the relish ones, the sweet relish ones. They still have a lot of these bumps on them because they're picked premature. They are they still have their, you know, this is like a maturity thing. Instead of getting boobs when they get mature, they get rid of their boobs when they get mature. So that'll flatten out and their their skin will grow up around them. And the best way to tell, because you'll always have a couple of those bumps. They'll They'll grow out of most of them. You won't have this many on it. You know, you'll have a couple here and there. But if you can see here, there's a little hair. I don't know if I can zoom in on that. Let me see here. You can see little hairs on the ends of them. Now, once those just brush right off, they'll be like a little black spiky thing. They're white at first, but they turn like a black, and they get crusty. They're real soft at first, but they'll turn like a... A hard crusty once you can just rub your hand down that and all those fall off the pickle has been matured yeah they uh, yeah you'll feel them they'll poke you when it's not ready but that is a uh, that's one of the ways to tell and I've had people ask um, what about you know getting seeds from your pickles or your, from your cucumbers, things like that. And a lot of the plants, um, it's real simple. Now, there's certain t 
techniques people have because not all plants you know there's plants that bloom in the spring in the midsummer late summer fall in the winter time so you have to know when the plant is at this certain point but just think of it as a human being a child at five years old does not have the capabilities of producing you know an offspring it isn't mature enough yet yes it has testicles you know like they like a baby plant will have seeds in it but they're not mature enough yet that seed hasn't gone through its developmental stages to be able to produce another plant so the best way that I've found in the books that I have wait till something has fallen off the vine and is laying there on the ground somewhat almost rotted they say the best time to go hunting for pickle seeds is when the pickles laying there the the vine is all black and the pickle itself is yellow that way you know 100 percent for sure that that is a mature pickle that it's gone through the whole process of maturing to where the seeds can now actually are you know mature enough themselves to produce a plant that's why a lot of the stuff you go in and buy at the store they pick it so early now some of them do some of them sprout you know it all depends on sunlight and things like that and when that plant became mature they all, it all happens at different times it's just like all of us we're all born on different days this all takes place at different times well plants can be the very same you know plants born three weeks apart yeah the sun controls a lot of things with it but it doesn't control the maturity date the sun controls when it's going to bloom when it's going to grow things like that the amount of sunlight they pay close attention to that but as far as when they get mature it's more of a date thing just like us it has to you know live so long and go through these trials and these chemical changes in order to produce life itself so when I'll go through some of the books I have later on that but a good rule of thumb is make sure the mat the the fruit of the plant has gone through all of its stages and is about ready to fall off the vine itself because then you know it's gone through all of those processes most likely uh, more spreading fertilizer yeah this was down I wish I had some of the pictures I'll, I'll do a before and after because I have a bunch of pictures of Adam's garden and stuff um, the importance of planting seeds and growing things yourself a lot of these are um, me talking like I am right now there's not so much pictures it's uh, an important step to an alchemical garden if you have oh here's a good one we'll take a look at this uh, okay when starting your seeds and trays it's a good idea to start your seeds and trays because you get no I never figured that out Jeep girl. But when you're starting your seeds off in trays, one of the most important things to do, a lot of people will pour water into the top. A lot of people will go and water their plants from up here. And I'm not saying that it's it's wrong, but your roots don't tend to have to search for water that way and they don't get bigger and stronger what we would do we would collect rainwater and then we would fill up the tray right here and all of these have holes in the bottom of them so what you do you fill it up to maybe a quarter of an inch to where every tray all of these are sitting in about a quarter of inch of water and you do that as needed you'll see like all this dirt right here is nice and moist when it isn't it'll start turning gray you'll get well, you know, wet dirt is darker than dry dirt. You can see when it starts drying. And 
you don't want to over soak it but that water will it'll run through that soil and those plants like nothing especially when they're young so I'll get trays and I'll just you know quarter inch of water at the bottom make sure there's holes in the bottom of this these are great because they biodegrade you can actually plant this whole thing just cut them into squares and plant them and that's one of the most important parts about starting off is getting your seeds nice and strong if you have any willow trees in your area one thing you can do is um, you go find the, the new growth in the spring and you strip all the leaves off the new growth and you cut it into about one inch sections now the willow is part of what is called the salix family it's a species of plant and they they produce um, two enzymes that are unique to this I mean all plants do it but they produce like extra like a lot and one is a uh, root um, rejuvenation and the other one is like a healing property so you can actually get some rainwater or some distilled water I wouldn't use you know city water and you put those those little cuttings up that you have of the willow tree into that rainwater and you let it sit for some people say 24 hours I like to the longer you do it the stronger it's gonna be so I do it for a minimum of three days I did mine for like two weeks shake it up every day just once a day you know not hard just swirl it around kinda and that is some of the best um, oh transplanting if you want to actually cut off a part of a plant new growth on a plant put it down in the dirt and then you use this to water it that plant more often than not will take a willow tree you could take something as big as your thigh you know a nice big tree branch from a willow tree and as long as there's water in the ground you can stick that giant limb that you just cut off of that willow tree and stick it down in the ground and it'll live it'll start a new tree just like that now all plants can do this it's been seen with oak trees things like that but the willow with those two chemicals the salix family actually now there's if you don't have willow trees in your area look up salix s-a-l-i-x and there are so many different types of plants in this family that you you should be able to find some in your area here is where uh, a garden I built for just Jack last spring um, we're making bamboo tomato cages right here you see some peppers along there we never watered any of these plants and with this permaculture gardening something I had learned about last year you call your local tree service and they get charged to dump all their you know people call it waste all the trimmed up trees and you know wood chipped up and you can actually they'll come and just drop it off this is 75 feet long and 35 feet deep this garden and we put like eight look at that look how wet it is down there but we put eight inches of wood chips on every square inch of that place and it just holds in the water and moisture this is an amazing way to garden right here um, now that's all it, it is leaves in there too it's the whole tree they take the branches the twigs um, big parts of the tree you know everything everything they cut down and grind up in their wood chipper they'll come with a dump truck and just drop off we had I think 10 or 12 maybe even more giant things of wood chips come and dropped off on his property and it's no joke 75 feet wide 35 feet deep and 8 inches thick of all that stuff and it man it it just this is the floor of of the forest right here this is what it consists of and it is it turns into some of the most there's hanker panker some of the most healthy soil and yeah this folks if you've never planted a seed 
I don't want to tell you to go do it right now because that's kind of a waste. If you know, you could plant any kind of plant really, but seeing a seed pop and come out of the soil and watching, you know, it go through all these stages. Oh, it's it's one of those things you can't explain. It's a feeling that it's so easy to obtain, but yet. You know, trying to recreate it with anything else. I imagine a lot of people think this way about, you know, creating a life. They say the first time you see your child, something changes. Something happens to you. There's a change. You, you, un, you comprehend something new now. I'm not comparing it to that at all. Not at all. But maybe a teeny tiny bit minuscule of that amazing feeling people get when that that's what I'm getting out of this I think it's it's a wonderful feeling that and then to care for the plant and then when you go to you know remove their fruits their children it it hurts I'm not going to lie to you folks it does and I think it's an important thing, though, that is that emotion that you're feeling for it. It feels that. It, it appreciates you more. The plant, you and the plant share this bond. And now it's not just food, it's, it's medicine. You've put part of yourself into the plant. This is alchemy. This is what they removed from alchemy and turned it into chemistry. Is that we influence everything around us. Plants know when you're close. Plants know when you're ignoring them. Plants know when you love them. They respond to it as well. It's not like they just know it, but in turn, they respond to these things. And me with three plants and another guy with ten plants, him not caring for them, not, you know, just letting them do what they do, I will get more fruit and nutrition and life out of three plants that I care for and love than another person will out of ten that they neglect and ignore. I mean, you see this with all different types of plants in the animal kingdom, or in the plant kingdom, sorry, animal kingdom. They, you know, you see pot plants that never grow taller than five inches out in the wild. And it's not that humans are neglecting them or this or that, but it's where they are, you know, where they were put the position they were put in may have been a little more hostile. Not as much sun, not as much rain, having to fight with other plants. Whereas one put out, you find one in the middle of a field all by itself, and the thing is 18 feet tall. And they're, you know, the same age plant. And it had all these nice things that God provided for it. A clear sky, um, lots of rain water, not a whole lot of other plants to compete with. And just those differences right there made a huge difference. Now you, now you put human intent on top of that, and wow, the, the plant will love you back. It will. It's, it's really, really easy. Um, when you just think about it as a natural uh, having a good tractor is good now this um, you can get one of these for about 40 bucks now we it's a flame thrower that connects just to a propane tank um, they make them where they have five nozzles on them we had just got the one with one nozzle but what this will do 
Let me see here. Yeah, it's not very big. You can get it at the hardware store. I think you can even get it for 20 bucks, cheaper ones. But you just go through and real slow over the top of your soil. You can go faster than that even. I've seen people do it a lot faster. Um, there's quite a bit of grass left. But you can even do this after you till. This is a good idea to do if you're not going to be planting right away. This will go down six inches into the soil and burn up all of the the roots and any plant and it'll kill any of the seeds that are in there already that you don't want here in the united states you know the things that they call weeds dandelion sorrel clover um, salsify all these different types of wild plants that grow all over the place those seeds can lay dormant in the soil for seven seven years you know, on top of the soil, out in the wild, and not sprout, and then all of a sudden sprout and take off and be a plant. So getting rid of all the things in your soil is impossible. You're always going to have seeds down in there that you're not going to see that are still living in there. That could sprout at any time. So this is a good way to get down in there and wipe some of that stuff out. Um, I just learned about this last year as well when we were creating the garden out in Michigan that would have been a beautiful one and this is the biggest garden I ever created folks 16 100 foot beds with nine rows in each all lettuce Mizuno um, no not oregano oh Red sails, lettuce, green sails. We had a, I don't know, 16 rows. And there were some radishes in there. And I think some beets along this last row. But this was in Detroit last year. This one hurt a lot having to leave this garden. Over 100,000 seeds right there. Yeah, lesson to be learned. But anyway, what are you going to do? I learned a lot from it. I can at least say that. I did learn quite a bit. Well, folks, I think I'm going to get rolling now. Um, I will figure out all the sound stuff. And you're probably going to be seeing a lot of these types of videos coming up here real soon. Because I'm going to be creating a garden. Um and I'd like to document the whole thing. It's going to be n not just a flat piece of land. This is going to be something that, you know, you're going to see it, and it's it's going to stand out. It's not going to be your normal everyday garden. But the whole purpose will be to, uh, you know, make more life, make more medicine, make more food, all that kind of stuff, and share with you how I did it, um, the processes I went through, how easy it is. I plan on doing it all with primitive tools. And, yeah, just, I can't stress enough. Love your food. Food is your medicine. Medicine is your food. The more you put into it, the more you're going to get out of it. And if you want to get away from this society that is being built around us right now as we speak this this crazy thing that's going on this is one of the key steps of doing so and if you have a black thumb find another trade or a way to help out people that have these you know the land and the skills and stuff like that become a an addition and not a nuisance find i mean any hobby you have sewing anything welding um, even just providing a place or a uh, a service as watching children anything anything we can do to help each other out to where we don't have to rely on people that we don't trust anymore um, get to know the people in your neighborhood if you don't have the means to get to a place where people are trying to all get together and do this step outside and say hello 
I know it's a little harder now with people all scared of everybody else, but you have the capabilities of doing all this stuff and, and changing your world. And it all starts with that person in the mirror. It, that's where it starts. And that's the only people we have control over is that person in the mirror. So just make a conscious effort to start putting this out in the ether. Maybe not doing it, but just the idea of doing it. Just the thought of doing it. Just, you can. I know you can. So, I'm going to get out of here. I love you all so much. Yes, Melissa, get back to basics. Um, thank you all for hanging out. Um, I'm going to start doing a lot more of this gardening stuff. It's, I think it's so important, and I have, I have a lot to share on the topic. And uh, we'll go through live even when I'm out there at Karen's sometimes, and we'll show you what we're going through and stuff like that. So it's been fun. Thank you all so much. I love you all, and I will see you all later. Um, come join us on Iron Row Media and even give us a call tonight if you feel like chatting about this kind of stuff. Um, we're going to be doing open phones. So uh, love you all. Hopefully we'll see you this afternoon. You all have a great day. This is Good Times for All signing out. 